here and now, we are here for you to talk about this week's events, in particular, the very tragic <clears throat> killing of uh, Sinwar, the field commander of the Hamas uh, resistance movement. And uh, he, in effect, sacrificed his own life in order to maintain the resistance. And uh, with justice, with reason, and with the support of the population, uh, Hamas may have lost uh, many uh, of its <clears throat> fighters, but there's many others who are volunteering now. Hamas is yep. recruiting. <clears throat> well, uh, the passing uh, or the martyrdom of uh, Yahya Sinwar, he was the uh, Politburo uh, chief of Hamas. Also, he's the military chief of Hamas. So he joined both of them, political and uh, military. Um, he died while he's fighting in the front lines, uh, totally in total contrast to the to the Zionist lies uh, that he was uh, hiding in uh, tunnels, uh, you know, being uh, combined with uh, Zionist prisoners around him, like as a as a human shield, which is not true. Turns out the guy was in the front line all along. He was not in tunnels. All the was the Zionists are trying. They did try to say, or to make us believe or convince, is total fabrications and lies about uh, Yahya Sinwar. The the passing of a Sinwar is not going to change the momentum of the revolution in Palestine or in Lebanon. Same thing as when they killed uh, martyr Hassan Nasrallah and uh, Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran. So uh, the revolution goes on. We have the Palestinians have no options but to fight for their lives, for their uh, country, for their rights uh, to uh, have uh, freedom and dignity and uh, self-determination mm -hmm. on their own land. So um, uh, salute uh, and shout out to Sinwar and his life, uh, his, his soul will move on. It moves on uh, with every bullet and every missile or every EID goes against the Zionist uh, colonists in Palestine and in Lebanon. Yes, I think one can say that <laughs> Sinwar lives on in a revolution. The revolution is a, a living entity now. And exactly. <clears throat> it has the, uh, the essence of the martyrs that is propelling the Palestinian revolution. That I can understand. That I see. What worries me, and I was discussing with Dunya just before, is <clears throat> whether or not the struggle can succeed in the face of the uh, support that the Zionist state is... Uh, receiving from the United States in terms of bombs and in terms of the uh, support from the population itself, which is still 75% supporting the Netanyahu government there, the fascist government of Netanyahu. So mm -hmm. I want to be optimistic. I can appreciate your optimism. I can support your optimism. I can see how the Palestinian revolution is going to succeed. But the question is for how long and at what cost? And what I see, the base of support that Netanyahu has enables him to go even further than what he has done. And that worries me. So, I'm not worried uh, at all. I am not worried at all. My, the Zionist colonists in Palestine, whether they support them mm. or they don't support them, doesn't add one iota to the, the grand plan of the Zionists and the Americans. Uh, they're supported by the Western imperialist uh, countries like France, Italy, Germany, uh, Canada, UK, and Australia. Their scheme is to uh, uh, submit the entire region by uh, fire and iron, and the, the this is this is their their this is the Zionist final solution to the Palestinian issue is by killing, murdering, mm -hmm. submit by force. So mm -hmm. uh, the colonists in Palestine, whether they're supporting him or not supporting, it doesn't really add one iota to the grand plan that uh, enacted by Blinken and Netanyahu last October, I mm. mean, October 2023. Mm. Yes, I know that the Palestinian resistance is not going to give up. The no. Palestinian resistance will grow. Yep. I'm just concerned about 
<clears throat> how long it will take and what the cost will be again. And uh, I think that uh, the Zionists are, want to make the, the cost to the Palestinian people as high as possible because they want to demoralize the Palestinian people. I don't think they're going to be able to succeed in doing so, but they have the support of 75% of the Israeli Jewish population to do so. Uh, They've gone, I'm you know, insane, you know, like they're fascistic, you know, the mentality, you know, is uncontrolled there. It's incredible. If there's a big opposition, yes, mobilized no, no, in the streets, no yes. You know, there's no opposition to the, the war in, in Palestine. They are, they're opposition to the tactics, probably, but not to the opposition to the goals or the mm. method being utilized. Maybe the tactics, the political tactics, Within the Zionist uh, communities, is there's different opinions, but no, don't don't go that far to that area of, of but you know an opposition. There's an opposition to to Netanyahu as a person to be a leader to this mm. uh, fascist uh, community called uh, Israel. Yes, but that's what worries me, you know, because the even the opposition is not you know like against the occupation. The opposition is, you know, for the return of the hostages, and they're willing to negotiate to do so. They're willing to go, you know, like a little bit further than Netanyahu, and that's about it. But within the opposition, there is a revolutionary opposition that's developing, but it's not very strong. What revolution? It's not sufficient. I, never, I, I don't know. I never heard of it or read about it. Could you could you in, in, in expand on that? It's not organized, you know. Just no, no. Sort of, could you just, expand? Like, give me give me an example of such oh, yes. a revolutionary. Yeah, you cannot some have a revolution come... within. You cannot have a revolution within colonial colon, colonial communities. Yeah, uh -huh. that's true. Sorry. Except the, that the, the opposition in the United States was one of the reasons. And a colonist at the same time. There's there's a contradiction here between being a colonist and a, a revolutionary. No yes, way. but the anti-war opposition in the United States helped end the war in Vietnam, even though the Americans are basically just colonists. Yeah, but you, you cannot mm. draw this uh, similarities uh, between uh, an established colonial yes. entity that destroyed yeah. totally the, the the natives, whereas in Palestine you have an, a colonialist who are in 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 the process of finishing off the 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 natives. Occupation. So there's totally yeah. different uh, you know uh, schemes here or or or, or, or party. So no similarities between the United States, although it's a colonial, a colonial communities, but it's already established. It's 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 done for the natives in in North America. So there's no similar. But there's in in Palestine, there's over 15 million people. Half of the uh, the population, more than half, are Palestinians. Whereas in the United States and Canada, you're looking at about two percent of the population, if if not less. Our native, so it's totally, you know, your your comparison is totally out of the window. Mm -hmm. That's true, but I'm still worried because no, no, I know they the designs they can continue. You know, as long as they have support, you know, of seventy five percent of the population, you know, they still can continue. You know, to drop American bombs. You know, they have no limit. You know, it's unlimited. You know what they can do in terms of violence. You see, you see, it it, it took about. 70 million uh 70 million russians to defeat the nazis that mm -hmm. was very high but mm -hmm. at the end of the day nazism de was defeated in algeria it took them about between uh, in 132 mil 132 years over 10 million algerians died in the last two years like about a million people but in the end of the day they they got freedom same goes to the uh, Vietnamese. Uh, over three million actually be, perished between the two colonial powers, occupation, France and the United States. Then, mm. So when we, we want to judge a revolution or, a, or a, 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 an issue such as self-determination, we don't look at the cost. We look at the end uh, of the cost. Okay. We know the cost will be high, very high, especially when you have a colonist, a colonial a colonist who doesn't want just you to, to live as a slave. They don't want you there. They want to finish you off. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's the end of this war. Who's going to be defeated and who is the victor? I think mm -hmm. we'll be victorious at the end of the day. I know there's lots of people die, 
but this is the name of the game. We're dealing with uh, people who are worse than the Nazis. I appreciate oh, that. Oh, so. Hey, man, let, yes. let me throw something in here just to follow up uh, on this comment. Um, I was watching a program a couple of nights ago um, which claimed to reenact how Brother Sinwar was, was, was martyred. And what got me wasn't his finger being cut off or throwing a hand grenade, no. What got me was how he was, how they claim it even came down. Supposedly, he went outside this house and a soldier said, quote, he looks suspicious. This is what Brother Ahmed, this is what um, Brother Ahmed is talking about, the nature of the enemy. In this country, in a Canada to around the world, black people, brown people, white people are shot by police because they look suspicious. And from the suspicion, the Israelis attack the house. So I think I think that your point about the the, 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 the colonists being vicious is true, but they don't care about killing people. They, they'll just kill and we'll have to keep fighting back. I find it very interesting. A lot of stories he was he was taken out of the court when I saw him. He went outside. That's suspicious. Let's let's attack his house. That, 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 you know, you know, that's a pretty vicious approach to eat to enforce to, to just how to, to deal with people because he was Palestinian. I find that to be very despicable, but typical of colonial settler mentality and, and how they carry out attacks, especially against the men of of the population. That's it. That's all I want to say. Yeah. Actually, there's one one note uh, I would like to add about the uh, finger being cut. There's uh, not rumors, but there's some information uh, circulating that one of the soldiers cut it and took it as a trophy. That's uh, one, uh, you know. A, a new, but I don't know. I can, I don't have any uh, anything to co collaborate it or uh, you know prove it. But uh, I'm not surprised if it's true that uh, the soldier cut his finger. And took it as a trophy. He said, "This is this is a senoir. It's like, to the, you know, like no, no comparison, but it's like uh, a Russian uh, soldier cut off the finger of uh, a high-ranking uh, Nazi officer. But of course, totally different uh, things." Mm. Well, my pessimism comes from personal experience, of course. You know, because in my case, you know, we lost even though the so-called allies won the, the Second World War, we, the Jewish people, we lost. We lost the whole working class. We lost the entire, nearly the entire Jewish Bundes movement, which was anti-Zionist, which was revolutionary, which was anti-fascist, which formed the uh, first uh, fighters against the Nazi invasions uh, of uh, Poland and Russia. Yep. But still, we lost. And the fascists, yes. you know, they will go to, you know, whatever length in order to win. They will kill. They will allow the 300,000, you know, Palestinians in North Gaza to die of starvation right now, which is happening right now. That's what uh, I'm worried about. And and the United States uh, give them a, a legal timeline to, to murder all these people. <laughs> yeah. They give them 30 days, another 30 days over the two weeks, another 30 days to bring in food and, and supplies for the people or else. So mm. 30 days is enough to finish off all these people or drive them down south. Uh, what a what a joke the, the American yeah. playing uh, on us uh, these days. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's like uh, the Security Council that voted for a ceasefire and then uh, asked for Israel to come back and report in 30 days. <laughs> they never came. Nope. <laughs> no. Nope. No. It shows it shows how uh what kind of joke is the international uh, legalities or organizations mm. when faced with the uh, American hegemony and and uh, terrorism and bullying uh, on the international arena. You know, I, even like for the, for example, the the International Cr Criminal Court has not issued yet uh, a warrant to arrest uh, Netanyahu and mm -hmm. uh, Gallant. 
it's been about nine months since the well, since the prosecutor who applied or, or asked uh, to issue such warrant, Karim Khan, his name Karim Khan. Even him, the other day, he was wondering what, why it take them so long until now to issue warrants. It tells you so much about the international uh, organizations, legalities, international law, blah, 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 that when it comes to that, it only works against the, the global south the black, the brown, the yellow, but not the white people, not the colonists, not the imperialists, that these laws and, and organizations are created to persecute those who stand against the American and imperialist hegemony in the world. But when it comes to us, the Palestinians, we're expendable. That's how what's, what's been said, not by, by words, but by deeds. We're mm -hmm. expendable. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Here, there's a an American subsidiary in Montreal, General Dynamics, which makes you know the bombs to be used, you know, by the Zionists. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Canadian government, you know, does nothing about it. You know, they allow you know for these exports because it's business, after all. You know, so they allow well, for. Yep, and but... there was there was one demonstration there at General Dynamics, but otherwise the demonstrators here, you know. Don't focus in on the problem, you know, of the of the manufacturing and the exportation of the war materials for the Zionists to continue. I mean, it's one thing, you know, to go out in a demonstration, a big demonstration, and express, you know, one's anger, which is about as far as the demonstrations here have gone. But that is not going to work. You know, even if it's a big demonstration, no. you know, the media will just, you know, not cover it. That's all, you know, like have to cover the first demonstrations. And then after that, you know, they ignore us. So to well, be ignored, corporate, you know, is not acceptable. It's a corporate uh, media. What do you expect from corporate media? It, tells, yes. it, it tags the line of the corporations and the corporations are all working under one umbrella, capitalism, making money and profits. Yeah. So uh, and and Canada is is another uh, you know a protectorate of the United States. So let's let's mm. be real here. Mm. Canada is another protectorate of the United States. They 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 tell uh, Trudeau jump, then Trudeau says how high. It's mm. not like if he wants to jump, he says just how high you want me to jump. That's what he does, and this mm. is what Canada is. And the same thing goes to Germany, Italy, France, UK, Australia. And all those, uh, uh, you know, uh, imperialistic uh, countries. I think that's the one principal reason why the uh, the the new Popular Front of France, which won the election, basically, is not allowed to make a government. Because, of course, the first thing they would do is recognize Palestine. <laughs> they will not allow that to happen in France. No, no, of course That's not. the big issue. Yeah. Well, maybe Donia could uh, shed some, you know, light on it. On the yes. issue of French it, politics, uh, she writes that her telephone has a problem. Oh, okay, 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 that's fine. And uh, it was overheating. Yeah, yeah. And she expresses her regrets and not being able to participate at this time. No worries, no worries. It's okay, you know, no, France is another uh, uh, American protected it with uh, some margin uh, for it to speak its mind like uh, Macron he's uh, you know in a shouting match with Netanyahu but bottom line he cannot uh, deviate from the imperialistic line that the, the collective West are supporting those, the, the genocide in Palestine and Lebanon mm -hmm. so uh, I don't think they will be uh, he just uh, Macron just appointed the uh, uh, a prime minister who is not from the popular front. He appointed somebody who is another uh, imperialist yeah. Uh, from yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So they see they chose someone to be prime minister who lost the election, basically. Exactly. Exactly. It's yeah. it is what it is. You know. Yeah. Uh, uh, Red uh, Wasp. Uh, oh, I want to mention. I want to mention that there have been some. You mentioned about going to the um, arms manufacturers and protesting. Yeah. What I know has occurred. I want to. I want to say it was in France or Italy. I'm looking for this story on my phone. I can't find it right now. 
there was some workers who were refusing to load war material from their country onto some boats going to Israel. I that, think that was it, I think yeah. that was in Spain and Italy. Yeah, yeah. That so that actually didn't happen this last week. So that was a good sign. Yeah. Those are the direct actions that are necessary. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have to take on the war the war factories themselves who are making the bombs. They have to be shut down. Definitely. Those are the uh, practical sort of aspects that the movement, you know, the movement exists. You know, we've got tremendous hum human potential there. But yes. now we have to find, a, you know, a, a program and uh, a direction, you know, for for halting this, uh, this genocidal war against the Palestinian people. And that has to be done by direct action. Because protesting alone, you know, is not enough. It's not sufficient. I Red agree with you. Yeah. yeah. Red Waspi, you have an obituary for Sinwara. Um, yes. Um, I have to say, uh, my, my internet connection is very dodgy. Yes, so, I noticed. Yes. Um, but hopefully you will stay on. Uh, are you able to get to your uh, to your copy of the uh, obituary to be able to read it to us? Yeah, that, that should not be a problem. Uh... Okay, yes. so what uh, I am trying to do is rebuild the Jewish Bund so that we can take away the support from the Zionists that is their last leg that they are standing on, this granite column of support that they have inside the Jewish people, which is not a majority, but still, you know, that minority, you know, has the control over the Jewish people. We have to take that control away. We have to make a revolution against the Zionist dictatorship over the Jewish people, as well as the Palestinian people. It's like a double revolution is required here in order to win. And what we're doing is, as the Jewish Bund, we're making an internal revolution against the Zionists within the Jewish people. Not just, you know, shouting from outside. No. We're going inside to take on the Zionist control over the Jewish people. And we're going to destroy the Zionist control that they have. That's what I've uh, started, you know, at the Jewish community campus here in Montreal with a vigil. And then I'm going to court uh, on January the 5th. I have a trial for being charged with criminal mischief for having written on a Zionist poster and a free Palestine. Just that. And they charged me with criminal mischief by the hate uh, crimes division of the Montreal police. <laughs> okay, so now when we get to court, then we'll be able to hear what's going on and then I'll be able to make my my position clear. So hopefully that will be uh, an ignition point as well. There are many ignition points that have to be made in order to launch a revolutionary process. That's what we're engaged in, you know, it's a revolutionary process to undermine the last colonial project, you know, that the imperialists can come up with, the Zionist mercenaries in the land of Palestine. And I, I'm sure that we will win. But as I said, it's a matter of time and cost. And to reduce the time and the cost of a revolutionary victory, we have to have the full program, all the mechanisms you know available to fight against Zionism, both without, you know, uh, outside of the Jewish people and inside of the Jewish people. Outside of the Jewish people, you know, we have majority billions, you know, are supporting the Palestinian revolution. But inside the Jewish people, we have quite a number of movements happening now, especially in the United States, but they're not speaking in the name of the Jewish people. That's the problem. That's what I see as missing in their approach. They're only speaking as Americans. And by the way, I'm Jewish, so I'm not an anti-Semite. You know, that's about as far as they go. That's not good enough. They have to contest the Zionist control of the Jewish people. They have to speak in the name of the Jewish people to all the rest of the population so that the population knows that the Zionists do not represent the Jewish people. And, and <clears throat> They have to uh, speak to the Jewish people to convince them that they're being misled into a fascistic direction that they cannot possibly support, you know, if they think about it. Because they are themselves subjects to, to, be, to be the victims, you know, of fascism. <laughs> to join the fascists, you know, like, is so irrational. You know, to join the Christian Zionists, you know, like Hagi, who think that, you know, the only sort of, you know, valid human being is a Christian, well, you know, like, 
how can the Zionists, you know, find an ally in in such drek as that? Drek means, you know, drek in Yiddish. It's... I will speak a little now because my telephone. Please do so. Up. Yes. And uh, it closes around. So, for me, the international solidarity now it's not about religion. It's not about uh, some people. It's a human humanity. It's from humanity. All the people need all humanity, not just Jewish against Zionists, not just Muslim. Not just... I fight. I am Muslim. I fight with the Muslim because they say, "Oh, we are we we not we all the world." It's a human case that I want to. But I understand your mind, Abraham. I understand what you think because more the Jewish will say uh, we are not Zionists, more the people will understand that Zionists, they are not Jewish. Mm -hmm. Another point about Yahya Sinoir, uh, I, uh, before you present Yahya, but you say that Yahya was 23 years in the jail. Yes, he was 20, uh, 23 years in, That's in right. the jail. Yeah. Yes. Ah, yes. And they exchange him with, uh, but it take a lot. It take maybe two, three hundred years. Maybe he will be able to to survive about the death. So they they give him a lot, more than one hundred years. And he was exchanged with one prisoner, one thousand Palestinian against uh, for one prisoner, uh, one hostage Israeli. Yes, yeah, Shalit. It was named Shalit. Yes. One thousand yes, uh, and thirty-seven uh, Palestinian prisoners. How many? How much? Sorry. One thousand and thirty-seven. Yes. So one Israeli, it's for one thousand thirty-seven Palestinian. It's very. It's like golden. So, so he make all his life. All his life, he meet. Uh, I see him. He meet Sharia Sin in the jail, mm. or before the jail. Sharia Sin, the founder of uh, Hamas. He meet Sharia Sin in the jail the first time. I think. Oh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. If I remember uh -huh. his story, so Yahya Sinwar make all his life for his freedom, not just his freedom, for the freedom of the Palestinian prisoner. So I don't know if the people uh, think about, because in, in our solidarity, we have, we, the big solidarity, and you have the solidarity that they bear now, they burn. So they don't know. When we give this news, it's like a number, Yahya Sinwar. They don't know how much he was precious with uh, for the for his people and for us. Voila, when Yahya Sinwar died, I was feeling my feeling was like orphan. Sam mm. uh, Ismail Hani, Sam Nasrallah, because we saw this man all all my life. I saw this man. Since I started to support Palestine all my life, I saw this man. So I don't agree that uh, the death of Yahya, of Ismail, or of Nasrallah are like a number. We, and I don't see, okay, we see a little, but I don't see the world wake for this case, for the death of Yahya. And did you see how we do? He take the button. That break my heart when I see him alone in his uh, chair with the arm broken and he can't move and he was to see the drone. It in the last <laughs> he fight in the he, he se battu jusqu'à son dernier souffle. Yeah, he fought until his last breath. Yes. Yeah. And he took a baton to try to shoot the drone with the only hands what he had. For me, it's very sad, and all the world must make like funeral for Yahya. Yeah. Has it was for me? Tout le monde entier, ils auraient dû faire des funérailles pour Yahya. Et la solidarité, elle doit être comme ça. Elle doit être comme un funérail pour Yahya. Elle doit être soudée, soudée, forte. 
pour contrer ce génocide. Yes, there should be a funeral for Sinwar internationally. Everyone should be in mourning for Sinwar. Mm -hmm. Dun Dunya, no, I was saying I before, before you came yes. on, I, I was saying that one of the major reasons why the new popular front is not being recognized as the government by Macron is because Macron knows that the first thing that the new popular front would do would be to recognize Palestine, and they will not allow that to happen. Macron, Macron starts to be afraid because he said to he say to um, to Netanyahu, "Don't forget that you take your state with the UN." What I was crazy when he said that. He, hmm. <laughs> he fight with Netanyahu, and just after he said, "But we are friend of Israel." <laughs> it was a drug. Hmm. He said to Netanyahu, "Don't forget." that you take your state from UN hmm. and Netanyahu answer no we take our state uh, with the fighter which fighter Lehi Lagana Lirgun yeah which all fighter? the terrorists yeah terrorists and they do with this terrorist Tzahal mm -hmm. so which honor he have so I understand that Macron Afraid because he have some interest with the Lebanon, and when they start to fight uh, to to burn Lebanon uh, and Beirut, Macron say that. So what we will wait, I don't know, but it's like hypocrite for me uh -huh. because the day after he say, oh, but we are the friend of Israel. Well, we are, you are the friend of, of Israel, not us. <laughs> you enter, Alan. And uh, yeah. that make me crazy because we take we, we, we our solidarity are uh, from our art. We, we do everything. We let our life in the in the in the corner to support Palestine. And some people did it when they have time. Mm -hmm. Never that will work. Mm -hmm. We must be in unit and united and together in the same in the same time. Mm -hmm. How yes. the Palestinian will feel this super? Mm -hmm. It's shame, very shame. And mm -hmm. if the world, uh, si le monde, je, faut m'aider dans mon anglais, était comme nous oui. avec notre uh, investissement à nous, mais ça serait fini. Les gouvernements, ils seraient à plat. Mm -hmm. With international, complete international support, then it would be finished. You know, the Palestine would be liberated. Yes, that and not you. Why? When you have time after your holiday, after that, after that, you... What this? They don't have time. They die. Mm -hmm. Yes, and 300,000 uh, Palestinians are dying right now in northern Gaza. Yes. Sinwar? You have the obituary for, or, uh, I, I mean, Red Wasp, you have the uh, obituary for Sinwar. I called you Sinwar. I, I consider it an honor, but I, I think I'm I'm not even worthy to come to his, uh, to, to his sandals, but mm -hmm. I do have an obituary. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ah, sorry. Sorry, I am sorry. No, 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 I C'est un grand honneur d'être confus avec camarade euh, euh, Sinoir, mais moi, euh, moi je ne touche même pas à ces sandales, donc euh, euh, merci pour l'honneur. Pour... <rire> ah. J'ai euh, 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 écrit quelque chose euh, à l'occasion de sa mort. Ah, bravo. We need oh, you, uh... we need all the world like you, like Abraham, like... like oh, oh. You, Ahmed, we need, we need, and Steve, we need the people. You know what said the Palestinian to me and Abraham before in Kafar Kaddoum? They said that to me, and I know they, they, they know, I know they uh, sing that about Abraham too. They said to me in Kafar Kaddoum, if we put three people like you in all the village and in all this Palestinian city, halas, the army will be. Back and it's finished for them. But I had just a camera, Abraham too. 
it was a very art for me in my art because after I shut all the people in my Facebook and everywhere, why you don't come? We need just three people for like me. <laughs> Hmm. And in each village, and it will be finished. Why you don't want to come? They don't want to kill you. They want hmm. to kill just the Palestinian. And never, never, I find, voila, we are few. We are few. And they told me, even if you are few, with this few, we will continue and we will succeed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sure. And yes. they told me, if you don't find anyone, if you fight alone and you don't have any view in your past and continue, because if you fight alone, it's better to don't fight. Mm -hmm. So, Halas, mm -hmm. I finished my point, but I am very nervous about this fucking solidarity. I am sorry. We mm -hmm. need to be strong and to 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 have a big power. The, we have this power, not them, not mm -hmm. the government. And when the people will know that, will know that they are not cheap, but they are human and they have a conscience, we will win. Mm -hmm. Senwa, please read the obituary. Um, yes. Inshallah. Inshallah. Bismillah, Bismillah rahman rahim In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most gracious. A few days ago, Comrade Yahya Senwa, Rahimahullah, the leader of the Islamic resistance movement Hamas, was martyred in Gaza during a direct engagement between the resistance fighters and the Israeli uh, the Zionist military. His death comes just months after the assassination of Comrade Israel Haniya and just one month after the, 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 Islam, uh, the, the, the assassination of Comrade Nasrallah. It marks another cowardly attempt by the Zionist regime to decapitate the leadership of the Palestinian resistance. Yet, as with those who have fallen before him, Comrade Sinwar's death only strengthen, strengthens the spirit of defiance, amplifying his legacy in the ongoing struggle for liberation. Comrade Sinwar was born in 1962 in the Khan Yunis uh, refugee camp, where his family had been forcibly, forcibly displaced during the Nakba from their home in Mashhed at Qalem, which is now occupied by the Zionist regime and was renamed Ashkelon. From a young age, his life was marked by the brutal realities of the Zionist colonialism. His early involvement in the resistance led to his role as a founding member of the Is uh, Ladin al Qassam Brigades and um, also to his two decades in Zionist prisons, which further cemented his commitment to the struggle. During his imprisonment, Comrade Sinwar wrote a novel, which is titled The Thorn and the, the Carnation in 2004. And those Zionist prison guards had tried to confiscate, had confiscated one handwritten copy. Another copy was smuggled out of prison. The novel remains to this day a source of inspiration for many resistance fighters, reflecting the enduring spirit of defiance, even in the darkest conditions of captivity. After his, 2000, after his release in 2011, as part of a prisoner exchange, Comrade Sinra rose to, lead, to the leadership of Hamas becoming one of the leading architects later of the Tufan al-Aqsa uprising, which began on October 7th last year. While the Zionist propagandists and the Western bourgeois media denounced this historic uprising as a terrorist attack, others compared it to the Warsaw Ghetto uprising or to the slave revolts in the United States. The Tufan al-Aqsa uprising broke the long-standing political stagnation, bringing global attention back to the suffering of the Palestinians in Gaza at, at a time when the Arab regimes, the bourgeois Arab regimes, were normalizing diplomatic relations with the colonial regime in Tel Aviv. Unlike the carefully orchestrated assassination of Comrade Ismail Haniya, rahimahullah, the killing of Comrade Yahya Sinwar was not the result of a targeted strike. The Zionist troops only later realized that they had killed the man they had been seek, uh, they had sought for over a year, as Sinwar was not hiding in the tunnels, nor was he taking refuge among civilians, as many of the Western media had said, but he was fighting alongside his comrades. This stark contrast between Sinwar's leadership and that of the imperialist and colonial leaders, from Netanyahu to Biden, from Keir Starmer to uh, Yoav Gallant, 
is a powerful reminder of the difference between a popular resistance army and a bourgeois colonial army. While Sinwar stood shoulder to shoulder with his comrades, these imperialist leaders cower safely far away from the battlefield, hiding in deep bunkers behind their military might and using the rhetoric of self-defense. In a 2021 interview, Comrade Yahya Sinwar, who had been uh, infected by COVID, he said, the greatest gift the enemy can give me is to assassinate me. I submit myself to martyrdom for Allah at his hands. I'm 59 years old and I much prefer to be martyred by an F-16 or by rockets than to die of COVID or of a heart attack. I prefer to die a martyr. And so he did, fighting until the very end. Central to Comrade Sinwar's life and leadership was the concept of sumud, steadfastness, uh, steadfastness in the face of oppression. Sinwar's leadership was not simply a military role, it was an embodiment of this unbreakable spirit of perseverance and resistance. The reflection of the collective strength, Comrade Sinwar's death will not weaken resistance. Comrade Anja Mollebelt, a Dutch uh, socialist feminist, noted that a thousand new Sinwars are already waiting in the wings. For every leader who was martyred, countless others are inspired to continue the fight for liberation. Comrade Sinwar's martyrdom is not the end. It's part of the Palestinian people yielding determination to break the chains of to break the chains of Zionist occupation. The martyrdom of Comrade Yahya Sinwar like that of comrades Ismail Haniya, Hassan Nasrallah, and the thousands of others before them, is a reminder of the struggle for justice, is a reminder that the struggle for justice is far from over. The Tufan al-Aqsa uprising has reshuffled the political landscape, making clear that the Palestinian people's right to resist cannot be ignored any longer. It also highlights the hypocrisy of the so-called peace talks and the normalization deals brokered by Arab bourgeois regimes and imperialist powers all while the people of Gaza remain under siege. As Comrade Sinwar once asked, does the world really expect us to behave meekly as victims while we are being slaughtered? Should we be silenced as we are massacred without any protest? His death is a reminder that the Palestinian struggle, rooted in summit and resistance, will not be silenced until liberation is achieved. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, do not say of those who are killed in the way of Allah that they are dead. No, they live, but you don't perceive. Comrade Yahya Sinwar is not dead. His spirit lives on in the hearts of the Palestinian people in every act of resistance and in the ongoing struggle for worldwide peace, liberation and justice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant Comrade Yahya Sinwar and all the martyrs of the Palestinian cause eternal peace. Inshallah. Amen. I mean, Inshallah. very good. Bravo. Mm -hmm. Bravo. Uh, if if uh, if you permit, uh, if you give me this permission, I want to translate in French. Of course, uh, I read some part of this, but it's very beautiful what you write. And I want to write it uh, from you and the Inshallah. hand. But Inshallah, okay. then I will translate in French. Okay, uh, let's use the chat here. You know, uh, uh, a red wasp. If you can upload the uh, the file of the obituary for Sinwar and Na Naras Nasar Nasrallah, Nasrallah. <laughs> uh, then uh, Dunya can can uh, make the uh, French translation and circulate it. Um, sure. Also, yes, I will. Uh, I will uh, read this uh, text in the demonstration. Yes, very good. That's what we should yes. be doing. Yes. And yes, also because they if, must know, they must learn, and it's incredible, but for some people, we must teach them. Or yes. they scroll, or we teach them, but they don't go to, to find this information. And we yeah. we need to make this, it's an honor for Yahya. Mm. And uh, they don't remember, uh, I speak about myself, just one minute not to take a cover, but because when we when you are sure that you fight for something true, you can die. You don't afraid to die for that. 
And uh, when I was in Palestine, and sometimes it was the dangerous situation with Abraham too, his witness, and they was violent also with Abraham. But you see his age. They push him, they shoot in the leg. They, we have a lot of mark. <laughs> we have the mm-hmm. Palestine in our leg and, you know, but it's not a problem. One day, there is a girl, she told me a lot, but this one, she told me, you don't have right to die there. I say, but I don't care. You don't have right to die about an accident, about an attack cardiac. You don't have right to die about it. I prefer died for one true case, for a, a struggle, a big struggle, and for what I believe, than to die alone in my home. And when I hear that, from Yahya Sinwa, I was proud of me, of my mind, of Abraham, and of every activist in Palestine. We don't have Rayed. You see this American girl, she's dead, but she knows she can die there. And mm-hmm. she don't have any hesitation. She go. Because we believe, and if we died, we will remember us as a person who fight for the peace. Mm-hmm. And for the Palestinian right. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and the Palestinians don't need to teach to teach us for that. They don't need Abraham can die too. Mm-hmm. But after what we will say about Abraham, what we prefer, we prefer die alone in, in our home or die. We don't go for die. But if we die for that, it's very prude. We, we are very prude. Mm-hmm. Proud, yes. Mm-hmm. Because the um, people Palestinian deserve, they deserve it. They deserve mm-hmm. all of our time, all of our life. It's the most beautiful people in all the world that mm-hmm. we meet. Oh yes, I agree. Yeah, it's wonderful to be in Palestine. I have to go back. <laughs> yeah, I have to. <laughs> here, you know, everything here is is corrupted. You know, I can't take it here anymore. But um, also uh, in the chat, okay, Red Wasp, have you sent the uh, the file to Dunya of the two obituaries? Um, because I, when we I will when send we... it, I will send it after the Zoom because I'm afraid if I open my internet browser ah, now that you will yes. lose me in the Zoom meeting. Okay, and, yes, your your computer. Um, okay, let's... we have to fix that. Okay, uh, uh, so uh, uh, if you can send the files to Dunya, and uh, Dunya is to be found. I yeah. can't remember. Uh, Dunya, are you on the uh, wire chat with us? What? On the uh, pr- application wire, wire chat. Are you? No, we uh, can't. No, no, on you, have <laughs> you have money application. You have money application, but my telephone won't to die when I go there. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, send me that in uh, maybe Telegram. Mm. It's good too. Okay. Okay. Um, so if uh, you, you send we'll the files to me, I can That's... send them to Donya. Yeah, I, I can transfer them over. Inshallah and also we'll we need uh, the information on uh, on the uh, uh, the doctor activist in Barcelona. Uh, if you can send that information to uh, to Ahmad, then that would be an important contact. You mean have. I send it to, to her? Oh, yes, that's right, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and what about Steve? It's like a ghost. We don't see him, we don't hear him. Who are, who are Steve? Present me. <laughs> Steve, Steve is protecting his job. That's what Steve is doing. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not a problem. And he, he have the right to do it. And, uh, but Siki, who is uh, Steve? Because I oh, Steve is, uh, is a veteran uh, of the Black, uh, Black Nation's um, Milton struggle with the Black Panther Party. He's a lifelong you know, political activist. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> yes. an honor to meet you. It's an honor. I hear about you from Abraham, but uh, I don't know it was you. It's an honor. Um, I'm sorry. I will have to leave some at the door. Um, I see you next, next week. Um, assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. I'm, I'm very sorry. I have to go. No, it's okay. No. We're okay. really finished now. That's okay. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, you know, in conclusion, you know, each of us, you know, should make uh, our concluding remarks now, and then we will end the session, and we'll continue next week. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to conclude that uh, 
the Palestinian uh, Palestinians in northern Gaza are still fasting despite the uh, famine, hunger, thirst, uh, target killing, massive target killing. Yet uh, the resistance is still uh, versatile in the north. Today, they managed to liquidate uh, four Zionist officers. One of them is Brigadier General of mm. uh, of a uh, you know armored division, and injuring uh, tens more. Uh, same thing goes in southern Lebanon. The resistance is still strong. They're still preventing the Zionists from invading uh, Lebanon. Uh, they, today, the Zionists uh, announced the liquidation of their own three own soldiers and others. Um, the Zionists are you know, being uh, beaten everywhere they go. The only thing they can do is by inflicting more and more uh, deaths on uh, civilians, whether in Lebanon or on Palestine, but we will triumph. We will be victorious, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I I agree. I can see that that's true. It will be, yes. And today, Zionists, uh, you know, yes. Today Tanya. there is a, there is a, the resistance don't be weak. They don't be weak. I see the video. I have the channel of the uh, the Al Qasem. So in Telegram, and I can see the video when they draw uh, Merkava. And it's true. It's not the fake. Uh, I have uh, the channel of Al Qasem. And yesterday it was two other. So they don't be weak. Believe me, they continued. And any one of us can think that after one year, they will be strong like it. Mm. So, okay, a lot of people died, but we must see what's happened in other, in other sides too. Mm -hmm. I think for me to wake mm -hmm. up, that helped me also to be strong mm -hmm. yeah. and to, to take the hope. Yes. But I... yesterday, you know, I was in a, one TikTok live with the north of Gaza, of Gaza, with a friend, Karim, he helped them uh, with the, some gift in TikTok. And we hear the shoot. And today, uh, we have the news in this morning. It was in this city where, where I hear the, the shoot. 60 people died. Mm -hmm. They shoot the people. Mm -hmm. By yes. the bomb, by the gun, if they try to go. And also, I see some image they do like an holocaust they make empty the, the school beside the Indonesian hospital they put maybe 500 people 300 people in the street to make like human child mm -hmm. to put them as a human child anyone moves they shoot girl uh, the old woman old man uh, the small children they don't care they make no difference with each other. Mm -hmm. Woman, man, small, baby, they shoot everyone. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Completely crazy. It's an holocaust. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they are cowards. They are, who do they attack? They attack the weakest. They don't attack, you know, <laughs> against uh, military oh, force. I, no. have, I have also one news. Uh, you know what I hear, what I read too. The resistance said, in the day, they, uh, no, in the night, en fait, la nuit, ils esquivent la résistance. Ils esquivent les résistants la nuit. Ils ont peur. Uh, les, ah. uh, you, you can translate. Ils ont peur la nuit, donc ils esquivent les résistants et le mm. jour, ils tuent les civils. Ah, OK. So... You know, the Zionist soldiers are afraid to uh, fight against Hamas in nighttime. When Hamas comes out, they retreat. And in daytime, all they do is kill civilians. That's about all the Zionist military, which is actually uh, should be called the imperialist death force. That's all they can do is kill civilians. Yes. And uh, uh, although that weakens the Palestinian people as a people, nonetheless, that's, uh, they cannot win a war that way. So it continues. It is surprising that the resistance continues after a year of direct occupation like this. The resistance is still very strong. And Steve. 
my my closing remarks Steve. is that I'm, I'm very happy to be participating in, in this conversation and I'll call on everybody to continue to work to build the resistance movement and it shows support for our brothers and sisters in Palestine, in Lebanon, in Iran, and, and everywhere they're fighting the imperialists. Okay, well, well I think we our, our lineup here, you know, and uh, our distribution uh, uh, geographically is an indication that we are a very strong movement. We are a movement of billions now. And uh, inevitably, we will win. It's true. Yes. Okay. So I am will... very proud uh, to know. I, uh, for finish, I am very proud uh, to know you, to know you, to Abraham, you know what I think about you, and mm. Steve and uh, Ahmed. Very proud to know you, Steve, you Black Panthers. It's, uh, <laughs> it's incredible. And uh, we are very proud to to your solidarity with uh, the Palestinian. And I am sure if, if they know that, they will take you, they will give you the Palestinian passport. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you very much. And until next week, this is the here and now of the international intercommunalist convergence. Thanking you for your participation again. And bye for now. <laughs>